Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to change your water in your chiller. This is something you should do on a regular basis. Follow your manufacturer's recommendations on how often you should change this and remember that you normally should only use distilled water. There's a number of other things that you can put into your water to uh, keep it from freezing and that kind of stuff, but I highly recommend that follow whatever your manufacturer's recommendations are. We're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how I do this. We're not gonna have to disconnect any hoses. Um, this is literally about a 10 minute process. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure we're gonna pull these down and check to make sure that they're nice and clean. There's a, a, a filter on both sides. You wanna make sure that you just pull this out, blow it off with a compressor, make sure it's nice and clean. There's one on this side, there's one on the other side and then we're gonna change the water. Now this, I've got a, a Thunder Nova 35100 watt, and it takes slightly less than two gallons of distilled water. And so the way I do it is I'm gonna take this cinder block, I'm gonna lift up the chiller, put this cinder block under it, and then I'm just gonna put a bowl back here. And uh, that way I don't have to disconnect any of these hoses. I believe that the more you disconnect and reconnect these hoses, the more apt you might have where you're gonna might have a leak. So this is a real easy process. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, what I've done is I've lifted this up. I've slid this cinder block underneath this chiller and that's just to give me enough elevation where I can put a, a bowl that will hold two gallons of water behind it and then we'll go ahead and drain this chiller. Okay, as you can see, I've pulled the uh, power cord out of the back of the chiller just to get it out of the way so you can see this better. My drain plug is right back here. I'm not going to disconnect either one of these hoses, but I am going to make sure the fill cap on the top of the chiller is undone and unscrewed. And at this point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew this gray cap We're going to drain it out until it all drains and it will drain the tube will drain into this and then this will drain into so you don't have to worry about the tube draining out you notice that uh it's pink in color and that's because uh my shop is not insulate or excuse me heated it's insulated but it's not actively heated unless i'm in it and so i mix one gallon of uh, rb antifreeze to one gallon of distilled water that's something that you need to do at your own risk if that's what you decide to do I would highly recommend you follow the uh, manufacturer's recommendations on that. And we're just going to wait till this all drains out. And usually what I'll do is I'll elevate the front of it a little, just a little bit just to make sure it all drains out. When it's all drained, uh, what I'll do is I'll put the cap back on it and uh, fill it back up with two gallons and uh, give it a start. And then one thing that you always want to make sure that you do when you replace the water in your chiller, you want to run the chiller for a while and make sure there's no air bubbles in the laser tube. Uh, if there's air bubbles in the laser tube, you want to just go ahead and pinch these, just pinch one of these as it's running and usually that'll disrupt the float flow so it'll take care of those air bubbles. So we'll get this all drained out and go to the next step. Okay, looks like it's all drained out. We're going to go ahead and put this filler cap back on. So we're going to just cap this drain. Doesn't need to be overly tight. And then we'll just take this and dispose of it properly. We'll take the cinder block out from under the uh, chiller and refill our chiller. Back here is your sight glass. And you will notice I've got one gallon in already and you don't see anything on this sight glass. Don't let that fool you. The second uh, gallon, it'll start to come up. And usually I like to be in the half to two thirds of the green. Now what will happen is I overfill it just a little bit. So I go towards the top of the green, because you got to remember you got to fill up your tube 
and then it'll come down. So I usually like to put my water level about two thirds in the green and when the tube is filled, it'll come back down to kind of middle of the green. This should never change, meaning this is a closed system and if you see your water level is different than what it was, uh, you wanna be looking for a leak because um, it's a closed system, there shouldn't be any water level changes. So we're gonna go ahead and stick in the second gallon of uh, distilled water and, it, and, and it'll be just shy of two gallons. So you can see that water level now is uh, about two thirds up the way on the green indicator. And what I'm gonna do is put the cap back on it. I'm gonna plug the chiller back in. I'm gonna turn the laser switch on so the uh, chiller turns on and we're gonna circulate this for a little bit to make sure that we get all the air out of the system. You don't want any air in your laser tube. So let's do that next. And you can see it's pumping all those air bubbles out. This is what you gotta be careful of. You wanna make sure that all those are gone. Once you do this and change your water, normally you don't have to worry about this. But definitely something you wanna just verify. You can see that it looks like all the bubbles are gone. So I'll just let this run for 10 or 15 minutes and make sure there's no air bubbles at all before I ever start to use this. Once that's done, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna check my water level. You can see that it went down, but not a whole bunch. As long as I'm still in the uh, green, that's where I wanna be. And at that point, you're done. That's all it takes to do this. Well, as you can see, it's really not hard to change the water in your chiller. Just a review, we took our cinder block, we lifted up our chiller, we put our cinder block underneath our chiller, we took this big bowl that'll hold at least two gallons, put it behind the chiller, we unscrewed the, the drain cap off the bottom left-hand corner of the chiller, we took the cap off and made sure that all the liquid was drained out. Matter of fact, I elevated the front of the chiller a little bit to make sure that we've got everything. And then at that point, we removed the cinder block, put the chiller back down on the floor, put our just slightly less than two gallons of distilled water in it and hooked it back up, let it run for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You'll want to have the back cover open so you can make sure that there's no bubbles in that uh, laser tube and just let it just let it run. It sh you should see no bubbles whatsoever. If you do, just remember, all you've got to do is pinch one of these lines a couple times just to disrupt the flow to get those uh, bubbles moving. The other thing that I will tell you that a lot of people don't know or realize is there is a water flow sensor in your chiller. And if it goes bad, you're not going to be able to use your laser until you get a new one of these. So just like having spare mirrors and a focus lens, I highly recommend that you get an extra water flow sensor for your chiller. Um, they sell them on Amazon. Um, they're not expensive. They're about 30 bucks. But trust me, if this goes out and you don't have one, you're not going to be able to use your laser until you get a replacement. So I will put a uh, link for Amazon, at least for the water flow sensor for this SNA 5000. Um, you might want to look up on your own just to make sure you get the right flow sensor. But this is something that you really need to have as an extra. Hey, if you like this content, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't done so before, if you could subscribe, I'd sure appreciate it. And if you have the ability, you can hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel, and it's those contributions are making this content possible. Really appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day.